I've been away for a while, right? And the place I was at did not have good internet, so I was not able to truly keep up with the game fully, but you know, I was, I was able to keep up with like the bigger things that was going on. The only real deck that I spent time testing while I was away was Goblin Biker, and I didn't do a lot of testing, but I got pretty far and I got pretty decent results with Goblin Biker and Fiendsmith because those are two decks that unsurprisingly work very well together, they synergize pretty well together because Goblin Biker does have access into a Light Fiend that can get you into Fiendsmith easily off of one card, any two level threes. I come back and I see, and you know, I'm making this these these combos that I'm, I'm about to show now. I finish them up and I'm just looking to see like, okay, has anyone come up with something else that I've missed, right? Like, have I missed anything? And unfortunately, like, uh, I don't know, Goblin Biker content has just been sauceless. Just like, there's nothing. Like, you, you, the best thing Yasin can come up with is my fucking I, IP Gabonga Pass. Like, I, I don't... I don't get it like what is where is where is the cook and then he has like fiendsmith in the list he has fiendsmith in the list and somehow the best thing he can come up with is ip gabanga pass i don't get it and then it's like oh well it's, it's a good board you can make a appaloosa i don't get, look if you can win on ip gabanga pass you, you could have won with like two effect veilers there's no way you're winning with this board in 2024 Yu-Gi-Oh unless your opponent just did not open well so let's get into some real combos because it, I, I can't believe this is even being entertained because <laughs> this you're not even getting the full value out of a single Gabanga and then you're summoning like IP as if like Imperm is 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 like not a card like Imperm for turn is like not a thing so this is the Goblin Biker first list that we're gonna go through and we're gonna go through some of the lines so why Goblin Biker Fiendsmith? Well, the Fiendsmith engine, even post ban list, which some of my testing I did do with Lacrima, but made sure that none of this needs Lacrima. Lacrima was great as a extender piece, but it wasn't necessary. And I think this these combos are going to show why. So a single tract gets us to a very simple board state, or not even board state, but to a very simple play to get it into Engraver, into Necro Quip, Necro Quip, uh, and then Fiendsmith gets to shuffle back uh, one of your Light Fiends to summon itself back from the graveyard. Boom, DDD Wave, High King Caesar. Now, uh, if you don't know what this card does, if you missed the Unchained format, this card says, negate a card that says summon twice per turn. Uh, that includes Nibiru. So if you draw a Tract, you have a one card line into Nibiru without using your normal summon. Awesome, right? So what else can a track do, right? So what what else is track meant to do? So uh, we get access to our Light Fiend. We go into Requiem. Requiem summons out Engraver. You guys already know this stuff by now. You've seen Fiendsmith. Fiendsmith is everywhere. And uh, unfortunately, we can get to a sequence, but because there's no more Lacrima, there's really no extension off of sequence by itself. So we're gonna need some extenders. We're gonna need to sauce it up to make sure that we can actually play with the Fiendsmith engine properly. So this is where the Goblin Biker part of it comes in. So uh, tour guide, you know her, you love her. She's the best starter for Goblin Biker by a mile. That's even post Rota. You can quote me on that. Uh, so tour guide begins your combo line and you know, mean merciless and um, you go into Gabanga here. Now I'm gonna do this first combo really slowly because <clears throat> somehow people still don't know that two level threes gets you like four to five interruptions that isn't just Gabanga IP pass, right? Because th this is supposed to be like a science, right? Like a, a science, you you take what's already been discovered and then you that that's supposed to spark in something in you and then that's supposed to like make you add to it you know like you're not doing things just free balling you're taking what's already out there and you're getting more out of it you're you're you're, you're discovering more right so instead of just bare bones combos like first off if you don't overlay gabanga into exceed armor uh fortress you're not getting the full value off your Gabanga because you're not going to get another rank three plus Gabanga plus Dark Knight Lancer unless you do it this way. And I guess either Yasin 
or uh, some other creators don't know this particular line. I mean, Goblin Biker players know it, you know, like us Goblin, like I've been doing this since fucking February. I don't understand how people have missed this, but I'm doing this for the people who may be new to Goblin Biker or who may not know too much about the deck. So we go Fortress and then we use the Dug Charger that we searched off of Gabanga to detach one to summon it, right? Now, at first it doesn't really matter which one that you detach because you're gonna detach all three materials. The one caveat about Fortress being a one card overlay is that it cannot be used for another exceed summon until it has no more materials left. So you need to detach all of its materials. So we're using the first material to summon out Doug Charger from our hand. And when Doug Charger is summoned, it gets us the Goblin Biker Grand Entrance. We can then use Grand Entrance to add a Goblin Biker from our deck to our hand, and then we can detach an exceed material from any monster on field to special summon that Goblin Biker monster. The one that we're always gonna go for is the Clatter Sploder. And Clatter Sploder gets to target any Goblin Biker monster in our graveyard and summon it back to our field. Actually, it's any Goblin monster, not, not, not just Goblin Bikers, which is relevant in certain cases. That's for another video. So we get to bring back Gabonga from the graveyard. Now, Gabonga does not actually need an Exceed material to do anything. Its Exceed materials are really just there for you to do whatever the hell you want with. What really matters is that its effect, when an Exceed material is detached, it gets to swallow monsters from anywhere on the field, including the opponent's field. On the opponent's turn, this can be an interruption even if it has no Exceed materials. So I don't know why people are leaving Exceed materials on Gabanga unless it's by its effect on end base. You should use up all those shits for what you need to do. And we have one more XC material on Exceed Armor Fortress, which Fortress itself can detach to search our full armored Exceed. And full armored Exceed is a, a really saucy trap, but essentially it lets us Exceed summon during the opponent's turn. And on top of that, it can also equip one Exceed monster from my graveyard or field to another Exceed monster that we control, which is going to be relevant with the Dark Knight Lancer that you are gonna overlay on top of Fortress, right? But you see here, right? Uh, we've gotten four monsters from one. We, we, we went from one tour guide to to a triple search because we searched Doug, we searched Clatter Sploder, and we searched uh, Full Armor Exceed. Now that we have two extra level threes on our field, we get to overlay into the Mellow Melody, right? The Jins from, you know, Yuma's cards from Yu-Gi-Oh's Exile are, are, are coming up again because holy shit, she's a light fiend, right? And it's like, oh, that's awesome. Well, why don't we just play Moon of the Closed Sky? because it's a Link monster, we can just use any two monsters to make Moon of the Close Guy. Why bother with the Mellow Melody? And that's because this is a Goblin Biker deck. You get to actually get something from using Exceed materials. And here's what you do. You use the Goblin Biker Grand Entrance first, right? So you can use both a, a Goblin Biker Grand Entrance's effect in the same turn. It can detach an Exceed material from any monster on field as the effect. That's not cost, that's part of the effect. And then you have the option, it's not mandatory, to add a Goblin monster from your graveyard back to your hand meaning even if you have no goblin monsters currently in your graveyard you can still resolve the second effect of grand entrance to detach a goblin monster and then add it back to your hand which is exactly what we're going to do with our dug charger so we've detached it and then it's going to come back to our hand now uh we're going to resolve the mean merciless that we summoned off of tour guide she's going to come back up where she can detach an XC material from a monster on the field and then special summon itself from the graveyard. And then when she's special summoned, we get to summon a goblin monster from our hand. Essentially, summoning, because this is goblin biker, summoning Mellow Melody is way better than summoning Moon of the Closed Guy because we actually get to take advantage of the fact that it has XC materials that it doesn't need for our combo. Now we continue like what we just saw earlier link into Requiem. And now I also made a Bamboozling Gossip Shadow here just because you're you're probably going to need the zones. You don't have to because Necroquip can go into the extra monster zone and Engraver can go into the main monster zone. So you don't need uh, two open main monster zones, but I'm not going to do anything else with those two uh, monsters in this line. So I just went immediately into the Gossip Shadow go into Fiendsmith Engraver and as you know it's already you, you guys already know Fiendsmiths and Dark Knight Lancer so what are we sitting on at the end of our turn 
Dark Knight Lancer, Wave High King Caesar, two negates. Against Voiceless Voice, this just wins you the game. Against Branded, this probably just wins you the game. Bamboozling Gossip Shadow negates any monster effect or turns the monster effect into both players draw a card. And then Gabanga, if an, if an XC material is detached from any monster on the field, you can swallow a monster. You can target a monster and swallow it, which is on the resolution of the XC material being detached. So it's not a quick effect, it's a trigger effect, but it's still pretty good for interrupting the opponent, stopping them from making like any uh, link or synchro or XC plays, swallowing monsters so it's less convenient for them to play around your board, make it harder for them to make an SP. And then Dark Knight Lancer, where if if a monster becomes equipped with an equip card to a monster you control, not just on the field, then you can attach any monster your opponent controls to this card as an XC material, and that doesn't target. So this is also on resolution, just like Gabanga, except Dark Knight does not target. So right now, two negates off Caesar, one negate off Gossip Shadow, and then Gabanga and Dark Knight Lancer, their, their interruptions are not as obvious because these are based on how you sequence your plays on the opponent's turn. But let me just give you guys an example, just so you guys can understand. So um, on end phase, Gabanga gets to attach any goblin monster from your deck to him as a material, just in case you needed NXC material. Most times you don't, but that's where the boom mock, I, I usually like to attach the boom mock because um, it's also a quick effect to detach and summon if it goes to the graveyard, which can be very helpful in certain matchups, especially for facing off like against another XC deck. This could be very useful. So we go into the opponent's turn. Now, all of our interruptions here are really during main phase because we can't really use Falarm and Exceed yet. So we have to pass over priority to our opponent, let them summon their monster. So they go for their tour guide. And now we use the Bamboos and Gossip Shadows effect here. The reason for that is because it had the Clatter Sploder sitting under it. Now that Clatter Sploder is in the graveyard, it can now use its graveyard effect, where during your opponent's main phase, it can detach one from any monster on the field to summon itself from the graveyard. And when Clatter Sploder is summoned, just like I showed you guys last turn, it gets to summon another Goblin Biker monster from your graveyard. Meaning, it's gonna detach and in this case, we're detaching the Exceed Armor Fortress, and we'll show you why in a second. And it also gets to go for summoning the, um, the, the Dug Charger from the graveyard since it was summoned. And now, because Gabanga also triggers on summon because an Exceed material is detached, it now gets to target the tour guide to swallow it as an Exceed material, meaning they don't get to keep their monster and we get to summon back one of ours, and we get to chain block so that we're not losing to something like a ghost spell. Not that people are really into ghost spell right now, but just in case, that chain block can be really, really important towards stopping, towards uh, not getting uh, clipped. Also, if they had like a live monster negate and they didn't negate Clatter Exploder's effect to summon itself back, but they want to negate its effect to summon a monster, it could also be the case that uh, you chain black with Gabanga just so that they cannot respond to the Clatter Exploder. Doug Charger was just summoned, and as we saw last turn, Doug Charger gets to search a Goblin Biker Spell Trap on summon. So if they have some kind of impermanence or some kind of um, temporary on field negate, you can go for the full arm and exceed. This allows you to exceed summon. And because we have two level threes on our field, that now allows us to make any uh, rank three monster, which in our case is going to be Cicada King, which is another live monster negate as soon as it hits the field. Now this one has to target the monster to negate its effects. It's not like Gossip Shadow where it can negate any monster effect anywhere, but this one has to negate a monster effect. So now uh, the Duck Charger searches us uh, some follow-up and now uh, the opponent tried to activate their Duck Charger because they can detach RXC materials, right? Now we're gonna use our Wave High King Caesar to negate and destroy that Duck Charger's effect. Now Wave High King Caesar is not once per turn. So in theory, if it has two XC materials, it can use its effect twice. If it has three XC materials, it can use its effect three times per turn. As long as this card has an XC material, its, its effect is always live. There's no once per turn. And that also helps you because sometimes you may need, an, uh, if you summon this first, you may need an extra XC material to detach. And detaching one from Wave High King Caesar really doesn't hurt because it can still stop the nib with its second material. The same way that in the in the hand trap video, I showed you guys like uh, Varudross and the way that we were detaching the cemetery from that to summon out Doug Charger. It's the same thing with Wave, King, Wave High King Caesar. 
It's like you can detach one Nixie material from it because you can still negate the, the Nibiru with the other one. It can stop Bistials, it can stop a whole bunch of stuff. Dark Knight Lancer is live here too because we have the full armored exceed in our graveyard to uh, equip an exceed monster and then dark knight lancer will trigger to swallow a monster so we used two negates or two interruptions we used three actually we used three interruptions one from high king caesar one from bamboos and gossip shadow one from gabanga and we still have three left one from cicada king one from high king caesar and one from dark knight lancer which they'll have to interact with the graveyard to stop our um, Dark Knight Lancer from resolving. That's six interruptions off of one tour guide, thanks to the addition of the Fiendsmith engine. Initially, this was only four to five interruptions, depending on the situation, but now it becomes six because Wave High King Caesar can negate twice. And yes, this is very front row oriented, right? Th this was the flaw with Goblin Biker. It wasn't, oh, IP Gabonga Pass. The flaw was, oh, well, we only make monster interruptions really because this negates cards that summons this negates monster effects this negates monster effects this swallows monsters this swallows monsters so it's very front row heavy now that does not bad in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. i mean it, it, it could still win you games and it's very overwhelming right but the game's changing 10 pies a deck board breakers are a thing so we need to adapt and we need to evolve so how do we evolve same start, right? So same same scenario. One card can get us into the full engine. Dug into searching grand entrance. We go exceed armor fortress, detach, search a full armor exceed. Entrance, exploder, exploder, get us back Gabonga. And notice I am playing around the animas, right? Never leave anything under your extra monster zones. Mellow Melody, you can summon in an extra monster zone because you're going to use it for a link summon anyway, but you know, uh, I guess at this point it doesn't matter, right? So Grand Entrance, detach the Doug, add back the Doug. Mean Merciless, detach the Clatter Splitter, summon itself back out. Uh, mean Merciless, summon out the Doug, go for Requiem. And notice we're not going for the Gossip Shadow this time, right? Because Gossip Shadow is not going to be as important in this line because we actually have a better play or something of a better play. So we still go for a uh, Requiem into Fiendsmith Engraver into the Necro Equip. Uh, and then we go uh, Engraver to shuffle back the Requiem one more time. So now we're sitting in the same situation, two level sixes. And this time we're going to make the almighty M7. And uh, the reason why we're going to do this is because we can use M7 to detach an XC material to add any monster from Graver Field back to the hand. And the monster that we're adding back is Fiendsmith himself. Fiendsmith himself gets to come back to our hand and gets to discard himself. Uh, if you've played Fiendsmith Rescue Ace, you're very familiar with this uh, play because uh, that this means that Engraver gets to discard itself to search Tract. Now, why are we searching Tract here? Well, because Lacrima got banned. Basically, this play, but it's better because Lacrima got banned. So we get to drop the Fiendsmith, get the Tract, and then Tract gets to add uh, Lurry. And then uh, we get to drop the Lurie. And then Lurie gets to come back uh, because it was discarded by the effective track. And then we get to overlay into the Fiendsmith sequence, or link into the Fiendsmith sequence, which requires two monsters, including at least one Light Fiend. Now, the reason why you needed to do that is because if you went into sequence earlier, the card that you would have been able to fusion summon before, the uh, Fiendsmith Lacrima, is banned. So now we need to have an extra uh, light fiend in our graveyard to make sure that we can get into the big fiendsmith fusion, which is fiendsmith Desiree. So we shuffle back our three light fiends, including engraver. So engraver is not staying in the graveyard this time. And we get to go into our Desiree. And Desiree is a live in a gate if he has a uh, link monster equipped to him, which uh, sequence can equip itself from field or graveyard to this Desiree. So we're going to link off the sequence and the uh, Doug Charger into the SP Little Knight. And that works because SP Little Knight um, is another interruption and it gets us sequence into the graveyard to get the full value of its effect where it can equip itself from the graveyard to our Desiree. It's better than just doing it from field because now it's like we have 
a proper interruption here. Now you're noticing we are about to hit end phase and we're not overlaying the Exceed Armor Fortress. And there's a really good reason for that. And there's a certain board breaker that you want to play around that makes this um, the correct play. So end phase, we get Gabanga, and then it's our opponent's turn. So normally, you, you could activate this full armor and exceed at any time. You don't have to wait until the main phase, but there's a good reason why we are. Because Dark Ruler No More, Forbidden Droplet, and other potential board breakers that could completely destroy our field are all spell and trap cards. So, uh, to play around those spell and trap cards, even Dark Ruler, we keep the full armor and exceed live instead of going into instead of immediately going into the dark knight lancer because if we would have overlaid into dark knight lancer and then tried to use this after we summoned out clatter splitter from graveyard then or before they pass over turn priority in their main phase one they could activate raigeki and or let, they could activate dark ruler and you would not be able to chain the full armament exceed to essentially protect or allow your Desiree to respond to the Dark Ruler. So the reason why you need the full armor exceed with the Exceed Armor Fortress instead of the two level threes is because you need this to be to be able to resolve or to be able to respond to Dark Ruler no more. And you get a full armor exceed into the graveyard also as a uh, benefit, right? So then you get to use full armor exceed to graveyard effect during your opponent's turn because you can use both effects in the same turn. It's no big deal. In our simulated situation here, our opponent has no board breakers in their hand. Desiree being able to negate any number of cards on the field equal to its link rating also punishes your opponent for trying to bait out its negate. So let's say they have like a field spell, a continuous spell, and then they try to board breaker you because they don't value that continuous spell or that field spell or that monster. Like let's say they try to go Snake Eye Ash first because they have more extenders or like like let's just they just try to go any monster first because they have more extenders in hand. Desiree could negate that monster and negate that board breaker, and then Gabanga could swallow that monster, um, using its effect, assuming that the monster is a threat. If it's not, you, you can you can possibly wait to use its swallow effect. But there's another thing here that I just want to make make sure that we know, and that is um, that the. Full arm and exceed into Dark Knight Lancer is still going to be good, a, a good trade off because we can use something like full arm and exceed to attach the M7, and so uh, Dark Knight Lancer would be able to trigger off of equipping M7, and it would also have a large amount of attack and be able to swallow a monster. So they, they're not going to be able to swing over us in battle. They can probably still have a player two in their main phase but it won't be as, as significant if they can't swing over us in the battle phase. And this is also important to know, like, yes, it is less interruptions, but it's a more diverse range of interruptions, right? So you have SP, you have, you still have the two monster swallows and you have the Desiree to basically negate any board breaker that they may have. So that's good. And it's still all off of just one card. So I can't really complain. And during the end phase, the SP comes back, right? So just be wary that with your zones, um, that's why I summoned Dark Knight Lancer into the extra monster zone, because if I didn't, then uh, SP would not be able to come back during the end phase of, of this turn. You have more than enough plays here for follow-up to go for game, to do whatever it is that you need to do. Over 6K attack on <laughs> this Dark Knight Lancer is just crazy, right? What's the next level of this, right? Well, what if we draw the tract and we want to use it to protect our plays from nib do we have enough zones enough space to still make all the plays that we need to play and the answer unsurprisingly is yes right so the only difference between this line and the line that we that we did uh two combos ago is that we're doing the fiendsmith stuff first and we're not doing all of it first but we're just doing at least the um engraver and the necro quip to make the uh wave king caesar not putting it into the extra monster zone there we go, Gabanga, Doug. You guys are gonna get tired of this, right? And this is all before um, Rage of the Abyss, too. So we go for um, Grand Entrance, Clatter, 
platter. Um, unfortunately, I goofed and I got Kabonga into the zone under the extra Masa zone. But is what it is. We'll survive. So we go Mellow Melody. Now we're putting Mellow Melody here into the extra Masa zone because we need these two slots. Like, it's not even like a choice anymore. Uh, so we're going for our grand entrance to detach one. And notice, we didn't detach from the Mellow Melody here. We detached from our Wave High King Caesar so that we can get the engraver in the graveyard. And that's going to be important. So now Mean Merciless gets to summon out its Dug Charger. And now we get to link two into sequence, right? And I'm putting sequence above Gabonga to protect Gabonga because Gabonga is precious and cannot be animated. It's just a widow warning three. Don't anima him, please. Please. And we get to go for sequence here and uh, look at our graveyard. Hmm, Mel Melody, the Brash Gin, the Fiendsmith, and Fabled Lurry, what? We, we struck three light fiends in our graveyard? What? How did we manage that? And we're playing around Nibiru? What? When did that happen? Well, uh, Sequence now gets to shuffle all three back to make Desiree. And we still get to make the SP. And we still get to Sequence equip. And we still get to Gabonga equip. I mean, uh, attach from deck. And we still have the full Armadic Seed live. And we still have a Negate on Caesar. So if they don't have the nib or if the nib pussies or if they pussy out from using the nib for whatever reason, which I don't think they should, I think they should take the trade while they still can, unless they need to discard the nib for something. This is still like one, two, three, four, uh, five interruptions, which is great. And you have a diverse range of interruptions this time off of two cards, but this involves you drawing the tract. Or if you draw the Fiendsmith itself, I believe if you draw the Fiendsmith itself, it's the same line, except you need a second Fiendsmith in deck, right? Because if you draw the first Fiendsmith and you discard it, when you go for the Requiem, you need another Fiendsmith in deck to summon off of it so that you don't use the Fiendsmith's effect before you summon the Necroquip. You, you want to summon Necroquip using a Fiendsmith that's already on the field, not one that you've used not one that you've summoned back using its own effect because then it's then there's no point. You may need to play two Fiendsmiths if you want this line to be live, but if you open a Fiendsmith and, you, and you're playing multiple, or if you open Tracked, then this line is possible. But only in those scenarios. If you watch my Goblin Biker, uh, how to beat hand traps with Goblin Biker video, you know Terror Top into Gossip Shadow is a thing, right? And it's, it's not as good as Wave High King Caesar, but it'll still get you to the same idea. You'll still be able to make Mellow Melody, go into Requiem, Summon Engraver, Summon Necroquip, all that nonsense. You'll still be fine if you if you open Terra Top. If you play two Engraver, three Terra Top, and one Tract, that's six cards that beats Nib. And if you're playing Cross Out, that's nine cards that beats Nib. So I think you have pretty good odds of beating a Nibiru. If you open Tactics and they like Ash or Veil you a little too early, you also get to beat the Nib by looking at their hand. I think you have a fairly good shot of beating that Nibiru. And if you know they're on Board Breakers and you go for the Desiree route. Now it's not as neat, but it's definitely, I think, worth the investment that it takes. So just to prove any two level threes, any two random, this could be two level three normal monsters, All right? This could be Hollow Hollow and Swordsman a Landstar, and you'll be able to get this exact same combo. Now, will it be as crazy and complex as it usually is? No, right? As you're seeing, because we didn't go tour guide, we didn't have the mean merciless, meaning we really didn't get much off of Mellow Melody's exceed materials, right? At, th at this point, it could have just been Moon of the Close guy. But the fact is, is that it's still better to have Mellow Melody just in case, right? So we're still going for Requiem into Engraver. Uh, Engraver getting equipped with Requiem. Necroquip. Summon back Engraver. Wave High King Caesar. Dark Knight Lancer. And this time, because we're not going for Desiree, we can overlay for Dark Knight Lancer on our turn uh, so that we can get the full Armadic Seed on our opponent's turn. So let's say they try to use something that summons. Negate with Caesar. So two level threes they put on their field. We can go uh, Clatter. Uh, Clatter summons out the uh, Doug, while also um, Gabonga can swallow a monster because an XC material is detached. 
now we get to go full armor exceed to overlay for a live monster negate and then we get to go for full armor exceed uh, other effect to equip to dark knight lancer now dark knight lancer gets to swallow a monster our opponent controls non-targeting and we still have two negates left right we used uh three interruptions one from caesar one from dark knight one from gabanga and we still have two left and this is off of two cards just as any two level threes the most random level three you could think of the most random one could make this combo happen all right so just keep that in mind now previously i wasn't going to show rage of the abyss lines in this combo uh, in this video but because I don't know, people are just so sauceless. I'm like, okay, I need to at least show you guys that this is still more than possible post Rage of the Abyss because apparently, I don't know, people just don't put time and effort into figuring out certain combo, like with certain decks, like it's not even like every deck, it's just certain decks, like people just don't want to research at all. And I, 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 I just don't get it. Um, so we go grand entrance. And we get to the badass goblin bikers, right? I know, sick ass name. It's not gonna stay the same in TCG. I'm preparing. I'm 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 readying my sanity for what this card is called in the TCG, because we know badass is not going to make it onto the official <laughs> TCG name. But yes, it is called badass goblin bikers. Um, and uh, yeah, I can't. I don't, I don't know if I'm ready to hear this card's TCG name yet. Like, please, just just give me more time. Like, October is not far away enough. Like, at least make it till next year until I hear the name of this card's TCG name. Um. Anyway, so what it does is that if you control no monsters, or if all monsters you control are goblin monsters, you can normal summon this card without tributing. Now, that's pretty cool, right? Level six, normal summon without tributing. If you if you have no monsters. That's not even the best part. The best part is that if you, it is normal or special summoned, it is a mini e -telly. It's It's almost like another version of Tour Guide because it summons a level four or lower goblin monster from your deck uh, for free. And that's great because normally, uh, goblin biker grand entrance was not a one card starter previously, but it is now. Now this card is a one card starter. Initially this card was only an extender, but now it's a one card starter. And because it's a one card starter, this is now no longer the main target that you search off a of Doug Charger, unless you open Tour Guide and nothing else. So this is uh, one of three new cards from uh, Rage of the Abyss, and we're gonna see the second one pretty soon, but let's normal summon this badass and see where it takes us. It takes us to the Doug Charger, right? And it's like, wait a minute, if we're summoning Doug Charger this early, how are we going to extend? Well, Doug Charger gets to add the Goblin Biker Grand Imprisonment from our deck to our hand. Now, um, I really wish this was a simple spoils card because the, the, you see Dia Bellstar in the artwork, right? You saw Dia, Dia Bellstar in Grand Entrance. You see Dia Bellstar in Grand Imprisonment. S somehow these are not uh, simple spoils cards where, you know, I, I would like to be able to to be like Azamina and get my starter off of Diabell Star 2. I would like that, but um, unfortunately, you know, Konami doesn't care about us Goblin Biker players. Also, um, there is a new Goblin Biker card featured on the artwork of both this and uh, Badass, meaning there's another Goblin Biker card coming in the future, hopefully. Probably in the next main set because they're they seem to be really tied to the Diabell Star lore, which I'm not complaining about. Like, uh, give us all the Goblin Bikers you want. You can theorize in the comments, you know, let me know if you guys think that it's another main deck monster, if it's another Exceed. What does it interact with? We assume it's going to be banished. I think it like it either summons from banished or it returns from banished and it mills. It mills the Goblin Biker. I, I think it does those two things because Grand Imprisonment here is an E-Telly for the deck. It tributes any monster on field uh, on, that you control and summons a Goblin Monster from your deck. It can't attack this turn. And that's it. There's no really, there's no real restriction on this card other than tributing a monster as a cost. So that's really interesting. So let's just get rid of our badass Goblin Bikers to summon out the Mean Merciless. Now I've seen some people go for Clatter Splitter here, which I just don't think makes sense because what are you gonna do with a level six Goblin Biker? 
nothing, right? Like, Fiendsmith is self-contained. It can make two level sixes without it. So we really don't need to revive this badass Goblin Biker, like, at all. It's, it, can, it can stay in the graveyard, all right? It, it's, it's fulfilled its purpose. It, it got us to Doug Charger, which got us to the sick new Quick Play spell, which is a definite two to three of, at, at least. Um, and now we get to go for Mean Merciless, because... Now, this sets up the same way the tour guide does, right? So it gets us two level threes, with one of the level threes being Mean Merciless, that has not used either of its effects yet. Which is pretty good. Now we go Gabonga. Gabonga is now going to fulfill the role of Grand Entrance and get us a Clatter Splitter, but we've already used our normal summon. So how are we going to take advantage of this Clatter Splitter? Well, by sequencing this fortress perfectly. We have to sequence this correct or else we actually don't get the full uh, effect off of it so we're going to detach one from fortress to get the full armament exceed and we have to detach the mean merciless this time um, and that is so that we can use mean merciless's effect to detach the gabonga which we have to detach the gabonga here so that we can summon itself back now when it's summoned it gets to summon a goblin biker from hand right and you've seen this song and dance before summon at the clatter sploder and Clatter Splitter summon back the Gabonga. The more things change, the more they stay the same, right? Exceed Armor Fortress has one Exceed Material left. What are we going to do about that? Well, that is where uh, the Grand Entrance is going to come in, right? We can detach from the Fortress, and then we can add the Goblin Biker Doug Charger from our graveyard back to our hand. Now, Doug can detach one of the Exceed Materials from Mellow Melody, because we don't need it anymore, right? to summon itself from the hand. Now we can link off the Mellow Melody to go for Requiem. Requiem get us to Engraver and yada yada yada, rank six. And we are gonna pull off the M7 again, right? Because this isn't gonna be our end board. Uh, it's, it's not just gonna be Caesar plus Dark Knight plus Kibonga. We're gonna go for the larger end board, right? So just to show you guys that it's still possible because we could end here with just Caesar, Dark Knight, and Kibonga, which would be fine because we would be able to make like a Shura King and all this and that. But trust me, we're not just gonna get to as far as we got to with pre-Rota, but we're gonna get even a little further. So we're gonna M7, Engraver, Engraver come back, Engraver discard, get us uh, tracked, tracked, get us Lurry, drop the Lurry, get us, Lurry gets to summon itself, link off for the sequence, and now sequence gets to shuffle back our three Light Fiends, go for Desiree, link off into Promethean Princess. Yeah, very original, right? That means Promethean Princess gets to revive a fire monster from Grave, right? So we get to revive a Clatter Sploder. And you're probably thinking, well, okay, that's cool, but what fire monster are we going to summon? Well, here's the thing. We're not going to summon a fire monster. What we're going to do is we're going to use a sequence to equip back to uh, the Desiree. And thank you to Rescue Ace Fiendsmith, because by looking into that deck, I figured out this play where you can negate your own Promethean Princess with Desiree, meaning that... Princess no longer fire locks you if its effects are negated, meaning you can use it for an SP Little Knight. And you might be confused wondering if if we were if we did all that work to go into Princess, what's the point of just using it to go into SP Little Knight? We don't have any fire monsters. And I would say, think again, actually, because we will have a fire monster on our opponent's turn because our best fire monster summons itself from the graveyard by detaching one from an XC material. So at any point during our opponent's main phase, we can go, hey, I'm gonna go Flatter Sploder to detach from Gabonga to summon itself back from the graveyard. And Gabonga is going to trigger off of that. Not only will Gabonga trigger, but now that makes Promethean Princess live, because now that means Promethean Princess can now, if they try to summon any another monster, that's an extra interruption that really cost nothing more than what we were already using. We already had the materials to make SP, Fortress, Desiree, and Gabonga, but now we can actually throw a Promethean Princess into the mix. And this could be done pre-Rota. As a matter of fact, all of this could have been done as soon as Infinite Forbidden dropped, but like, no one was really labbing this deck. I heard some people took Goblin Biker to Nationals, and I didn't hear anything about Goblin Biker at Nationals, but you know, I think if you guys would have played this build, probably would have did a bit better. <laughs> not gonna hold you and yeah you know i was really sad that i couldn't um upload videos when i was away because i really wanted to make a goblin biker guide for nationals and i was like fuck but hey this is going to be basically the same post rota 
So this is gonna be Goblin Bikers for like the next few months, guys. Like this is, like we just got the ban list. So, so we know it's hit, we, we know it's not. This is Goblin Biker for the next few months. This is Fiendsmith Goblin Biker. And if you can't afford the Fiendsmith engine, once we get closer to Rota, I'm going to uh, delve into another build of Goblin Biker, a bit more unique for now, because I feel like this video was long overdue. I just wanted to do this uh, Fiendsmith Goblin Biker video, but let's just show off the line real quick. So again, Platter Splitter can detach from Gabanga, or uh, if uh, you can go full Armored Exceed first, right? Like if you can use your, uh, if they used their Board Breaker first, you negate with Desiree, and then you go full Armored Exceed into the Dark Knight Lancer, because you might as well do them in the same chain, because you, you want this Splitter live as soon as possible, and detaching the Fortress could be a good way to, it's like the best monster that you can equip, so sometimes you may want to prioritize it over detaching a Boom Mock, but, Again, it's dependent on the deck that you're facing. So now Clatter gets to revive a Goblin Biker monster from Grave. We get to revive uh, Doug Charger, and Doug Charger is going to be able to search us some follow-up. Another grand entrance for next turn to get us more extenders, more possibilities. And then we can go for um, the full armor exceed, and we can also negate their uh, grand entrance, right? Assuming that this was Dark Ruler, this would this play would still work because you because you're not directly responding to it with a monster effect. So we get to go into Dark Knight Lancer, and then uh, let's say they use their grand imprisonment to special summon a monster. Cool thing about Promethean Princess, she can still trigger if you have six monsters on field because her effect is supposed to destroy both monsters and if you do special summon this card the and if you do being optional meaning the special summon needs to be able to happen but only if the monster is destroyed so the so if you have six monsters princess can still trigger so now we go princess and now we can full armor exceed to attach and uh swallow a monster and we didn't use the sp negate here but that was uh See one, two, three, four, five interruptions. I need me some of them bean smiths, is what I said. And I think I cooked. I, I think I cooked pretty well with Fiend Smith. So this is the Fiend Smith list uh pre-rota. So this is the neater list. So this is the neat list with uh pile up uh crazy beast. In this format, you really don't need to be on triple dug and triple grand entrance, but I have QCRs and I spent money on them and I'm gonna use them. <laughs> but in reality, you can take out um, uh, like one Doug Charger and either one or two Grand Entrance because you really don't need to play that much of a Goblin Engine for the Goblin deck to be successful. As I showed, any two level threes could get you to the same combo line. As long as you have at least one copy of everything in your deck, your main goal is to get two level threes. So that's why we're on the Nyan Nyan, Psychic Tracker and Wielders, e Tellies, Paratops. Another thing to note is that Utopic Ray Lancer. So normally before I was talking about the spell Armored Exceed, but now with uh, Utopic Ray Lancer, you don't need the spell Armored Exceed anymore because the whole point of that was to go for Torpedo so that Torpedo can negate the effects of the monsters that you were battling as a equip spell. But now we have Utopic Ray Lancer, which can summon itself by discarding a discarding any spell or trap card and using a rank four or lower, right? So using any rank three, you can discard the full armor and exceed that is searchable off of your fortress. And then you could summon this guy. And then if you have Dark Knight Lancer as well, you can either add the full armor and exceed back if you need to go for a play next turn, or if you already have the, the means to go for game, you could banish the full armor and exceed so that Utopic Ray Lancer gains the attack of another Exceed monster. Hopefully it's Exceed Armor Fortress. It goes up to 5k. It can attack twice. It does double battle damage if it battles a monster. And if it destroys a monster by battle, it gets to attack again. And all monsters your opponent controls loses 500. And it can negate the effects of all attack which are monsters your opponent currently controls. So Voiceless, which was one of the hardest matchups. This card single-handedly deals with the Skull Guardian being 4,000 attack. And yeah, I mean, it's just an overall pretty awesome card for uh, going for game this is like the card i think goblin biker needed to actually be able to like go for game because before it was actually kind of difficult and like you you might have needed to like go into main phase two and try to make some more interruptions after you attack because going for game was not always guaranteed especially like going second sometimes there may still be like a turn three and turn four in the game but with this card it's going to be a lot easier for there just to be turn twos. Side deck, you know, Mulch Armies, we need them, we love them. 
ghost mourners that just has an extra contingency but most people only play like one or two copies nib still a great hand trap better now that uh fiendsmith has less access to extenders and starters but it's still not like a be all end all but it's still a pretty good card um and now that apple is gone less decks will have an answer obviously not us right because we know our answers we we got two of them in our extra deck right gossip shadow and high king caesar but you know other decks you know the the, 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 the pansies, the people who can't think for themselves. Droll, because with more decks relying on searchers rather than engine, it could be a lot more effective, a lot more damning. This is not the build that plays track. This is only the build that goes for Caesar. So yeah, Crossout could be a good option here. And so could like something like Anti-Spell for going first. Going into the second build, which is the build that plays uh, Lurry and the Fiendsmith and the Tract in the main. And as you'll also see, I'm playing something a little spicy here, Ashra Karibo, which can reveal a number in our extra deck and summon itself from hand as the same level as the number monster's rank. But while it's on field, you can only summon number exceed monsters. So it's a good extender for like, let's say Terror Top gets negated and you were going to go for Gossip Shadow. Just summon Astral Karibo, go for that Gossip Shadow anyway. You reveal it, it's a number, it's it's a rank three. Astral Karibo gets summoned as a level three monster. Boom, overlay into Gossip Shadow. Takeda King is also a number and it's also rank three. There really aren't that many other good rank three numbers other than like Fortune Tune. So I figured like we really didn't have to like overcomplicate things. It's just a good one of Extender and it's a light fiend, right? So let's say you already open Lurry and you have Fiendsmith in rotation already. You have no other light fiends in your deck wrong you you can go for tract search astral karibo as an extender to make uh bamboos and gospel shadow if you haven't already and then drop the lurry now if you don't want to go for lurry if you want to go for the astral karibo in your search then if you open the full armor exceed you can or after you search the full armor exceed you can actually drop this when searching astral karibo and then your dark knight lancer can add the full armor exceed from your grave back to your hand because it can add any exceed card from the grave back to hand once per turn and that's and it's it's the perfect target to add back right so that you can still get your plays going on now obviously that would require you to overlink to dark knight lancer before you end your turn but that should also mean that like you can also end on uh, Astral Karibo and like Mean Merciless in, in certain lines or like one level three and then just leave those two on field and just overlay into Gossip Shadow using the Full Armored Exceed. So there are ways to play around it or Cicada King if you already went for Gossip Shadow. And yeah, as you can see here, only one entrance, only two Doug Charger. If anything, you can cut Doug Charger down to one, but drawing this card as, as an extender really isn't that bad. It's just you'd rather do it off of your line. Uh, you can see the M7 here. You can still see the Caesar here, you know, just in case we uh, go into it uh, first. Uh, you see M7. You can see that we've cut some of the redundancy in the extra deck, right? There's no Zeus here, which makes board breaking a bit harder. But I figure a lot of this stuff is really only for going first. Like Desiree is a going first card. Like you're not going to go into Desiree lines going second. So I figure you side deck uh, whatever other extra tools you think you need, especially like you type of Grey Lancer and Zeus for going second, because you probably won't need Desiree. You may want, you, you may still want to go for M7 over uh, High King Caesar just to get rid of cards on field. It's not one for one. Crazy Beast also is not in the list, right? Because we took out Pile Up. Not because pile up is bad, but just because if we're not playing the full, if we're not playing multiple grand entrances, we're most likely never going to be able to search this card, and we don't want to draw into it, especially when our our lines are so like um, heavy on, on like an alternative engine. But we also took a sure king out because it's just too hard to manage a uh, sure king plus fiendsmith plus. Uh, Goblin Biker is likely will never have the space or the means to play this unless it's in like a really bad grind game state and at that point kind of is what it is. I do like that at least you can recycle the Mela Melody so if you really wanted to take one of these guys out for Zeus recycling your Mela Melody with like your sequence or your engraver could be really helpful because she can detach one attack directly go into Zeus and that could be really good into like a mid to late game state or or, or like a simplified game state so just just be really uh cognizant that that is also an option torpedo is also like not as good as it used to be you can just it, there's a part of me that's like maybe i should just take this card out because i'm almost never summoning it as long as fiendsmith exists even if i already have like gossip shadow out 
it's like more, more likely than not, I'm just gonna use my other monsters to go for SP or Cicada King. I'm more than likely not gonna worry about the draw. We kind of don't need Torpedo anymore, unless you're gonna use it to go into like a one card XCMR Fortress uh, going second, or if you wanna use it to go into Utopic Ray Lancer just to draw that extra card, you could. You don't have to. There are other rank threes you can summon. So it's really like player preference. So Torpedo might be cuttable from this point on. So, so this is the Desiree line variant. And then this is the post Rage of the Abyss build. Only one badass because although it's level six, it's very searchable. And I'd much rather not open multiple of these. Like, cause if I'm going grand entrance, this is basically another tour guide and I don't need two normal summons, even with the Grand Bash, which I actually did not keep Grand Bash in the list because I'm thinking like, okay, realistically, there's no rank nine or rank six that is worth starting my turn out with other than Caesar. And this card cannot make Caesar using only one card and going into the combo after. Like you either have to go into combo or don't bother playing this card at all because it would have to be, because basically I would have to open this and Grand Bash to make Caesar because I, I, I could go this into uh, Mean Merciless and then activate Grand Bash to make them both level six. But that's very specific, right? Because this uses my normal summon. So um, it would be better if it was like this into Doug and then Doug into Imprisonment, which is like, I think the better line to go into our place. Also, we cut down on Wielder and Tracker. They're, they won't be as important. Triple Imprisonment because there's just no way you, you have a card like this and then you say, yeah, I'm only gonna play like one copy. There's no way. It also helps with uh, Tour Guide and Terra Top. I think as I mentioned earlier, if they get Impermed or Veilered, you can tribute them and boom, you know, you get a free monster. And it like in Terra Top's case, you're searching Takatomborg, right? You can summon out uh, Mock Speed and then you'll still have a wind to summon Takatomborg, which is like awesome, which is why I love this card. Because like, even if you go like Goss of Shadow first, this could be a good extender, right? Let's so say you have like two level threes, Itelli and like Nyan Nyan, and you have Takatomborg. You can go for this after summoning Gossip Shadow, which is cool. So yeah, you, you still have a lot of options in this deck. I am still playing the pile up. You don't need pile up in this list like i don't think you need crazy beast and desiree in the same list but personal preference i also don't think wave high king caesar and m7 you need in the same list like you can side out the high king caesar for going second if you're going to be playing the desiree line because it's likely you may not be able to make it going first you could also side out you know torpedo uh you can take out princess if you think princess is a little too high maintenance but you could also just take out the crazy beast because it's like less important then the rest of these guys, if you're going into the Fiendsmith line, so like Torpedo and Crazy Beast could go here. And as you can see, we're not even playing the Utopic Ray Lancer in this variant. This variant is a lot more like combo heavy and it's better for going first because you can see we don't have like the tactics and stuff. Kind of um, player preference, but there's a lot more options you have as, as a player, especially with um, stuff like rank sixes, uh, Typhon, which is, a really good one card overlay and I do miss playing it, but it's also not the best card to play at the moment because how many monsters are there with 3000 attack anymore? Borlo's banned, Baron's banned, Apo got banned, like what? what's 3k or more attack that's really getting caught by Typhon because if you say like Flameberg, they're probably resolving Flameberg by the time you go for Typhon. Like, like you're not just summoning one going for Typhon. So this card's purpose is kind of in flux at the moment because there aren't enough cards that like this card beats anymore. Like this was the Baron de Fleur bullshit board counter and now it kind of like lost its purpose because we don't have enough threatening monsters with over 3000 attack. Desiree is sitting there at a beautiful 2800 so he's not, like, you can't stop him with a Typhon. 
with King Caesar 2800, you can't stop this with Typhon. You Bells, all their monsters, it's like zero attack. Tenpai doesn't really make a board like going first. I mean, Branded is going to sanctify you before you even get to the main phase. So I don't know what Typhon is for this format. Like, I think it's gonna we're gonna need to do a lot more research. Uh, I don't think this is a Typhon format, uh, sadly but uh, it kind of is what it is, right? You gotta adapt to each new meta as they come. Although I do think it is funny, right? So I was looking into the rank sixes. Uh, this is actually possible in in Goblin Biker. If you have any extender plus uh, badass, then you take um, those two level three Goblin Bikers and you turn them both like level six. And you can make this card um, and your opponent cannot respond to it at all. Uh, which is great, but three level sixes is, is a big ask, but it's very possible in uh, in this variant of the deck. I was looking to Gauntlet Launcher because I like the double pop. Sadly, it's not a quick effect, so like if they have a negate, there's really nothing I can do about it. Funny card. And then Lars would be a good, you know, um, two level six card as well, but it's... Uh, Strike Bouncer just doesn't... It, it only negates on field, so sadly... But it does do t uh, burn damage, which is cool. Um, Transcend Drake could detach this up in a banished dinosaur, but I, I don't. None of the Goblin Bikers are dinosaurs, sadly, so I can't really take advantage of that. Um, and then, because of Scrap Goblin, Badass can make level 9 synchros, but none of these are really starters except for Power Tool Braver and Karakuri. And we're not playing Makanko or Infernobles, so I don't know what other equip spells there are like, that can let us take advantage of Power to a Braver. Because like you can't do something like, oh, search Living Fossil, because it, the equip spell needs to be able to equip to Power Tool. So it can't just grab any equip from deck. It needs to be something that's equipable to him, like Durandal or the Makanko spell to be able to utilize it. So kind of tough. There's a lot more theory, a lot more um, practice that, we're, that I'm gonna need for this deck before I fully commit to to making this deck a thing or to bringing it to events. But uh, just so that we can get like these gears rolling before Rage of the Abyss comes out, this is the Fiendsmith variant, I think, of Goblin Biker, and I don't think it's gonna change too much from this. Uh, there may be a few cards swapped in and out. Maybe we put Astral Karibo back in this variant. Maybe we take her Princess out. Maybe we keep Princess in. Maybe we add more engravers so that we have more plays through Nib. I don't think we had more badass Goblin Bikers. I'm just hoping he's a QCR, or he's an Ultra, so he could be a QCR, so that like he can match with my Doug Chargers, because it would suck if he was like Common or Super, and then he summons out like this QCR Doug Charger. It would, it would just be so awkward. I, like, I want at least like either Imprisonment or Badass to be an Ultra, just one of them. Like, not, like I, not even both, just one of them to be QCR just so I could, you know, because we only need the one got a badass, so it wouldn't be a bad card to get QCR and, you know, grand imprisonment. Like, th this could be a super, um, but if it's like a secret rare, I'm not going to complain. I doubt it will be, though. There's too many, uh, there's too many other good cards in the set, and Go Goblin Bikers haven't really topped in a while, not since, like, uh, not since before I left, so it's been, like, at least two months, and, uh, yeah. This has been uh, Modern Goblin Bikers. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one.